This is Nightline, the line that's open at the right place at the right moment, and this is Walter O'Keefe. Good evening, good evening, and here's our first Nightline call tonight from Hollywood. Groucho Marx, and you bet your life. Hey, George, you tell us, what is tonight's secret word? Ladies and gentlemen, the secret word tonight is people. P-E-O-P-L-E. Really? You bet your life. The National Broadcasting Company presents Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life, the comedy quiz show transcribed from Hollywood. Groucho meets our first contestants in just one minute. Hi, Joe. Say, I just heard the good news. What are you going to do with the money? Well, the missus and I figure to buy some property when I retire in 67, so we're investing in Series H bonds now. That way we keep the money safe till we want it, and we get a good income from it in the meantime. If you have $500 or more to invest, ask your bank about Series H bonds. An interest check in the mail every six months from Series H bonds. Over the maturity period, nine years and eight months, your bond earns an average of 3%. Hold a $500 bond to maturity and it earns you $147.75 interest. And your money is guaranteed safe by the United States government. If you need cash, you can redeem your bonds at par after the first interest period by giving a month's notice. For safety, for guaranteed current income, invest in Series 8 savings bonds in denominations of $500 and up. See your banker for full details. Here he is, the one, the only... Well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra $100. George, who's first? Well, Groucho, we have Viva Smith and David uh, Ewan waiting to talk to you. So, folks, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word, and you each take home an extra $100. It's a common word, something you see every day. Viva Smith and David Ewan. Uh, Ewan? Ewan, that's right. Ewan. Viva, I've heard of Viva La France and Viva Via, but uh, where'd Viva Smith come from? Well, Groucho, I was born in a little town called Weir City, Kansas. Weird City? And it's not even on the map. Oh. Weir. Weird City, yeah? Weir, W-E-I-R. Oh. Uh, it was a coal mining uh, town. Coal mining? Not anymore. They've uh, got all the coal out of the ground no. uh, now. I'm a coal miner's daughter. In oh, fact. you are? You don't look like a coal miner's daughter. At least you're not very lumpy. You're <laughs> kind of chubby. You're more the bituminous type. Huh? <laughs> and you're David uh, Smith, huh? No, David Ewan. Oh, you're David Ewan? Ewan, that's right. Now, where are you from, Dave? Well, I was born in Austria, just outside of Vienna, and I came here when I was four. Went to the schools in New York City. What sort of work do you do, Dave? Uh, I'm a musicologist. Oh, well, that's, uh, that sounds real uh, classy. What is the music? Is that a piano tuner? Well, I've written about 35 books on music, which have been translated in about 10 languages. And they cover just about every facet of musical activity I've done. Rock and roll? No, not rock and roll, but I did do a book on popular music called Panorama of American Popular Music. Don't you call rock and roll popular music? No, it isn't music. Oh. It isn't popular. It is popular, but it isn't music. Well, let's leave rock and roll out of it for this week. Who is writing music you do like? Who's your favorite composer today? Well, in contemporary American music, I would consider R- music. Richard Rogers. Well, he's great. Uh, why do you consider him uh, well, as opposed to all the others? Well, my last book is a biography of Richard Rogers. Oh, I see. Are you married? Yes, I am. Oh. How did you meet your wife, Viva? Viva's not my wife. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, who is your wife? How did you meet her and how? I don't really remember how I met her, probably introduced by my friends. Do you still regard them as your friends, these people? <laughs> yes, I do, because I probably introduced them to their wives. Oh, well, that's one way of getting even. <laughs> now, tell us again how you met your wife, and this time, lie about it. Well, I was going to tell you that how she fell in love with me, if you oh, want to know. Right. That, that I do remember. Well, that I don't believe, but go on. <laughs> uh, you see, we were just... This friends, is one incredible story after another here. Oh, this really happened. We were just friends... And one day I happened to tell her that I played poker with the four Marx brothers. 
and she was as crazy about the four Marx Brothers as I was, so that was the day that love walked in. Well, you couldn't have played poker with the Marx Brothers. None of us ever had any money. But I did. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, you sound pretty bitter. You better tell us the whole story now. Well, here's what happened. You were appearing on the Broadway musical stage for the first time. I think it was Alsatia. Yeah. Were you oh. married then? No. Oh, no, yes. I was a youngster. You 1925. I was born in 1907, so I was 18. Uh, well, what went on during this game? Well, be, uh, I came down to interview you for one of the magazines. And so? when I came in, you were in costume already, and you were the four, five of you, because there were five brothers yeah. then, were playing poker. What I didn't know was that the Four Marx Brothers, uh, playing poker with the Four Marx Brothers is not an orthodox procedure. <laughs> I was asking you questions, and while you made me punch drunk with your crazy answers, uh, Chico would look into my cards, he signaled to Harpo, and then when Harpo had better cards than I had, he would raise me. And when he had the worst cards, he'd tear up his cards, and Chico gave him another five cards. <laughs> When the game was over, I didn't have an interview and I didn't have any money because I lost some bucks. Well, that's the Marx Brothers, all right. <laughs> What'd you do? Did you call the cops? No, I didn't. Chico gave me back the seven bucks. Oh, he did? Oh, yeah. yes. <laughs> well, then it couldn't have been the Marx Brothers. <laughs> Must have been the Dolly Sisters. <laughs> well, time is running out, so let's go from the musical world to the financial one and play You Bet Your Luck. Now, remember your partner so yes. you can discuss yes. anything before you make your final <laughs> conclusion. <laughs> You selected literature. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Uh, number one, the first question is, in the 1600s, who wrote the three great comedies, The Silent Woman, The Alchemist, and Valpone? Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson is right, yes. And you're on the way with one right. In which of Shakespeare's plays was Caliban a character? C-A-L-I-B-A-N. Yes, I know. Midsummer's Night Dream. No, I'm sorry. It's, it's The Tempest. Oh, well, now we have one wrong. Don't get the next one wrong or the game is over for Who wrote the King Solomon's Mines and She? A book called She. Oh. Uh... King Solomon's Mines and She. Oh, yes, I know. Uh... Oh, he's running. Ryder Hackett? Ryder Haggard yeah. is right. <laughs> Scare me. You have one right now. <laughs> Scare me, too. <laughs> now, who wrote Jungle Stories and Kim? That's Kipling. Kipling. Kipling right. Herring. That's right. No, just Kipling. Yes. <laughs> now, what author created Uriah Heep? Uriah Heep? That's Dickens. That's Dickens. right. Dickens. You're almost there. Get the next one right, and the thousand dollars is yours. <laughs> he lies across the ice in what famous novel? Uncle Tom's Uncle Cabin. Tom's Cabin. Born or all right. Right. Yeah, yeah. I give $100,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a crack at 10000 So go over there and sit down and think about it. And if we don't see you later, thanks for being on the show. And you certainly was for that money. In just a moment, our second couple will join Groucho to play You Bet Your Life. Whenever you want things to be just right, be it here or there or day or night, you make it Pabst, cause Pabst makes it perfect. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect, just as we always have ever since 1844. So next time, you make it Pabst, because Pabst makes it perfect. America's blue ribbon beer from the Pabst Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yes, Pabst makes it perfect. George, what uh, what have you got now to uh, well, Groucho, uh, we have a couple to baffle of, me. I think this will too. We have a couple of brothers on deck now. They're Ted and Tom Lagarde. So, boys, you come in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to your bet your life. Save the sacred word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common way. It's something you see every day. Ted and Tom Lagarde, They're quadruplets, huh? <laughs> Twins. I thought so because you're both wearing the same kind of neckties. <laughs> Where are you boys from? Well, we're from uh, Mackay, uh, North Queensland, Australia. Is that the real McCoy? Uh... Mac <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people call it Mackay, Mackay and a lot of people call it Mackay. It's a spell. Well, you said the secret word. <laughs> you said the secret word, people, so you and your father each get $50. <laughs> it's 50 for you and 50 for you, Dad. Uh, are you married, Tom? No, we're single. No, no this is Tom, isn't it? I'm Tom. Oh, you're Tom. <laughs> well, are you married? 
No, we're not married. You're yeah. not married? No. We're both single. Why? Uh, if we meet... Uh, a couple of uh, twins, twin girls, girls that we that like, we'll... A couple like. of twins? You mean you want four? No. <laughs> uh, 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 twin girls. We meet uh, twin girls, we'll get married. You would? Oh, wouldn't it be confusing for twins to marry twins? You'd never know whether you were kissing your wife or squeezing your sister-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what would you expect from your prospective brides? Well, we expect them to be able to cook, wash, clean, knit, darn, socks. Likes to stay home and, you know... Not to uh, be the boss. I see. In other words, what you fellows are looking for are unpaid domestics, is that... <laughs> And, uh, well, kids, you can forget it. You'll never get married. American girls like to cook, wash, and clean, but not the way you want. <laughs> what they want to do is cook their husband's goose, wash their hands of the kids, and clean out the joint bank account. <laughs> I want to thank every bachelor in the audience. Uh, <laughs> even a couple of married men are applauding. What did you do over there in Australia? Well, we, we worked on... on Ted, a, you're Ted. I'm right? Ted, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, then you must be Tom, huh? That's right. Right, you right. ask me the question. Yeah. No, I'll answer the question. Yeah, you keep your trap shut. <laughs> <laughs> I've changed my mind. I want to ask you the question. Huh? Uh, what did you we, do over there? We, no, 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 I've skipped again. I want to go back to you. Huh? Well, we were born on a farm and, and uh, we cut cane until we were 13. You cut cane until you were 13? Mm -hmm. Where was Abel while this was going on? Sugar cane, which is sugar cane. Oh, sugar, sugar cane. cane. Well, I cut school until I was 40, eh? Well, we left home at, when we were 15. We went to work on a cattle station. What's that? Happened. Like a ranch. It's like, like a ranch. Like a ranch. Oh, and ranch. we used to uh, drove cattle, round up cattle, dip and earmark and brand and inoculate cattle. It was a pretty rough. Pretty, pretty rough uh, uh -huh. life. job. They used to wake us up with the kookaburras. That, uh, they used about to wake you up with the what? Kookaburras, around about 4 o'clock in the morning. What's a kookaburra? Is that it's an alarm a, clock? No, it's a bird. Calls it's out. A, it's a bird. The bird calls a out? A bird calls yeah. out. Is this trained to, to yeah, do this? Tom, Tom calls like, <laughs> he sings out like a kookaburra. Let's, let's hear. How's a kookaburra? It goes, Get me out of bed. That would get me under the bed. <laughs> well, why did you do this? Well, well, uh, well we, we, uh, uh, we thought it was like the movies. You thought working on a we cattle used... ranch would be like uh, the movies? We, uh, like... we were 10 years old, right, before we saw our first picture. Mum oh. drove us to the town. It was, uh, we used to live way out in the bush, 13 miles, and she drove us into town in this old sulky. It's a kind of a buggy. And uh, we saw a picture. It was a cowboy picture. Oh. And so we thought, well, that, <clears throat> that's what it would be like. But it was, it was pretty tough. It was rough. We only used to get three... Uh, three how much three, did uh, you get? Three quid a week. Three, four quid. How many, how much four quid. Three. Four. We used to get four pounds. Uh, four quid a week. Three quid a week we used to we get. We used to get four we quid a week. We used to get... <laughs> we used to get three quid a week and Thank our tucker. You got your tucker? Yeah. Tucker. I didn't know Sophie was in Australia. <laughs> Well, what did you do after that, Tom? Tucker is there. You got Sophie Tucker, what did you got four quid and you got Tucker? Right? We went to Bubba Wabba. You uh, went to where? Bubba Wabba. Well, cut out the baby talk. Well, that's how you're grown up men. Right? Bubba Wabba and we competed in a rodeo. We was our first rodeo event experience. We broke our wrists and busted our knees. We had a real rough time, but at least we got our Tucker and our expenses, Bakshi. Uh -huh. Bakshi, that's, what's that? That's is free. there anything like a quid? No, it's, a, <laughs> it's, a, it's free. Bakshi means, is a, free. means free. Oh, gratis, eh? Uh, what, what are your plans now? What would you like to do? We'd well, like to get in the movies. In the movies. In the movies? Mm -hmm. Well, the second show at the Pantages starts at 9.50. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if you're qualified to be movie cowboys. Can, can you ride? Yeah, yeah, yeah we, we can, can ride. Good? Yeah, no, fairly good. good. Can you rope? Yeah. Yes. No, can not you, real good, but we can good. do a bit. Uh, can you bulldog a steer? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Can you steer a bulldog? No, we can pass. Well, if you can do all these things, you don't belong in Western movies. You belong on a TV panel show. <laughs> now, it was nice having you up here, and you're real talented, and I wish you lots of success, and I'm sure you're going to have it. Thanks. Thanks, Now, let's see how well you can do in the quiz, and let's hope you do well. You selected professions of famous people. 
If you'll ask you some questions, if you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win a thousand dollars. Remember, <coughs> before you answer, talk mm -hmm. it over with your brother. Huh? Righty. <clears throat> yeah, give me the profession of Chester W. Nimitz. N I M I T Z. Nimitz. You heard of Nimitz? You never heard of the guy is in the life before? Is he American? Uh, is he American? Quacho? Yeah. He's American. Such is fame, huh? Uh, 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 well, let's take a guess Nim at uh, Nimitz. He's uh, uh, anything to do with science? He was the admiral of the Pacific Fleet. He was the head of the whole Pacific Fleet. Well, unfortunately, you didn't know that, so you have one wrong. Righty. Well, if you don't no. know Nimitz, I'm afraid to ask you the next one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who was George Alice? George Alice. What, what was his profession? He was a... Uh, A-R-L-I-S-S. -S. <laughs> George Alice. Really? Wasn't he in... Uh, well, his show, he was a show yes, business. Show business. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you want the right track now? You have one right. Get three more right. You'll have a thousand dollars. You fellas make me nervous. Uh, what was Sir Arthur Sullivan's profession? Sir Arthur Sullivan. Sir Arthur Sullivan. Oh, why did you pick this? Uh, well, it is, all the categories were so uh, we, we were complicated. Well, oh, this is very simple, apparently. Yeah? Sullivan. <laughs> Sullivan. Uh, it was, uh, uh, it's too late. In, 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 in the parliament. He's a parliamentarian. Oh, Gilbert and Sullivan, the composer. Oh, the com oh. What was Jan Paderewski's profession? Jan Paderewski. Uh, he was a great composer. Yeah, that was. You're right. <laughs> you have one right now. I'll find something on here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who was Les Darcy? Les Darcy is a great fighter. Fighter. From where? From Australia. That's right. Australia. <laughs> you have two right now. <laughs> Only two more to go. Name the capital of Australia. Canberra. Canberra. <laughs> it's not on here. I just made that up. <laughs> Les Darcy isn't on air either. <laughs> All right. And what field is the name Frank Lloyd Wright famous? Frank Lloyd <coughs> Wright. Yeah. Uh -huh. a writer? No. Don't say that. A writer. Uh, Probably the world's right. most famous architect. Oh, right, dear. Well, now we're back to one wrong again. I think Honestly. I'll go back to what was the capital of Australia? <laughs> <laughs> you have one wrong. Don't get this one wrong. What did Vincent Van Gogh do? Van Gogh. G O G H. In science? I don't know what he did in science, but that wasn't his profession. What was he's a famous painter. Don't you remember he cut off one of his ears so he oh, could I'm see sorry. better? <laughs> you got two wrong I'm sorry, you missed well, right. in a row. We well, certainly okay. gave you many yeah. opportunities here. Sure, we appreciate it. We don't well, want you to go away broke. You won a hundred dollars, haven't you? Sure. Already well, there's a chance to win another hundred. Are you ready? No help in the audience, because this is a tough one. From what large animal do we get whalebone? <laughs> and Bear is right. <laughs> we'll find out if our first couple will try for $10,000 in just a moment. In centuries past, this was the sound that used to get the news around. Yes, in centuries past, the people on one side of the hill beat the drum to share the news of the world with the people on the other side of the hill. And since the world in those days was a smaller, more easygoing world, this was enough to get the news around. Ours is a chaotic age with critical events flashing across the face of the earth. Fortunately for us, we can keep up with these events because we have at our fingertips the fastest means of communication ever devised. We have radio. And NBC Radio, with news on the hour, keeps you alerted to world events wherever they happen, as soon as they happen. From ages primitive to present, people have wanted to keep up with events. And in our day and age, this is the sound that really gets the news around. This is Leon Pearson inviting you to keep up with the news on the hour all day, every day, over most of these NBC stations.
right, George. We're ready to see who wants to get a crack at all this money. Will you bring out the first couple? All right, Groucho. Viva Smith and David Ewan. Would you come back, please? You won a thousand dollars so far. If you decide to try for the ten and you fail, you wind up with a total of five hundred. What are you going to do? I'll try for it. You? What about you? Uh... Well, Groucho, I'll just keep the five hundred. Well... That's your privilege. You're, you're not going ahead. That's your privilege. Congratulations on winning the $500. Now take a seat over there Thank and you. watch the fireworks. Thank you. You're ready to go uh, to try for the big yes, question. I'd like to try. Think of a number between 1 and 10. 7. 7. Give the wheel a twist. <laughs> Number was seven, it landed on three, so this question is worth uh, one thousand dollars. I'm sure you're aware that Columbus sailed in fourteen ninety two and discovered the New World. But for one thousand dollars, tell me the name of the Spanish port from which he sailed on his historic voyage. <laughs> Take a guess. Well, I know that this city is not in Spain, but I always thought he sailed from Lisbon. No, it's Palos. P A L O S. Palos, Spain. Sorry you missed it, but you wind up with two hundred and fifty dollars. Congratulations and thanks for being with us. You bet your life is transcribed in Hollywood. Produced by John Goodell. Directed by Robert Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jack Meekin. This is George Fenneman reminding you to tune in again next week, same time, same station, to hear the one, the only, Groucho. And see Groucho every Thursday evening on NBC television. You Bet Your Life is heard by our armed forces around the world. T-Bone joins Donald Voorhees and the Bell Symphonic Orchestra on the telephone hour tonight on most of these NBC stations.